sometimes I'm lost for words. Yeah. I'm actually lost for words of what's actually going on in London at the minute. Mm. Every day this is happening. Mm. I mean, it's something dumb like 50 killings or 50 stabbings since the turn of the year. <laughs> This can't keep happening. Yeah. All the youngsters of today can't just be on the road. No, it's not everyone. Of course, it's not. Nah, I mean, it's, it's. Then I don't know. Would you think the numbers getting bigger, or do you think the the numbers are just being more exposed? Because that's an argument that yeah. these sort of killings and this sort of sort of stuff has been happening for years in the hood in South London and East London and wherever it's happening, but it's just not been documented. Yeah, yeah. Now it is. Now it's being documented and. And they, they have to now. They have yeah. to start documenting it because people, are, you know, pe like I say, people are just dying, it's and that's the population. It's happening. You know, um, it's, it's it's a shame, man. It's a shame because, you know, you got you got young siblings coming up in in a world and in an era where it's scary to be to be young. Yeah, yeah. It's scary to be young and, and think that you can't really go to the park and play football too tough because yeah. you don't know who's gonna be there. You can't. You can't get your boys and say, oh yeah, let's go Westfield or let's go do a yeah. thing. Let's, because you, you, you're scared that, you, your parents are scared that you might not make it home yeah. on a, like, on a mad, mad sporadic thing. So, I was, just, I, was just speaking, I was just speaking to a young boy the other day and he was talking about how, it's, let's talk about this, yeah. So he was talking about how he can't walk home at four o'clock through the estate because he gets rushed. Yeah. And he gets rushed because there's like sort of like a, a rival, rivalry thing between him, his boys, and another set of boys. Four o'clock, it's not dark. He can't, he can't walk through the estate to go home. The boy's like young, he's like 13, 14, and he, and he, and he can't go to another estate. And he's, he, scenarios like that are happening where they, they can't even walk through their own area. It used to be where you walk through someone else's area and it's like, oh, what, you're not from Mandir kind of thing. But now you can't even walk through your own area. It's like in-house beef. Yeah. So it's just destructive. Like it's not even us against them. It's it's you against you it's and individual, yeah. individual. Like it's. And what's a, a scary thing as well is that the teachers in school, they a lot of them don't really know what's, that what's going on and at all outside of school. All they know is what's happening between the hours of eight or whenever they start registering to three or four whenever they finish school like they're misbehaving they got a detention they didn't do their work they're they're not they're not being a good student that's what they think they're thinking but there's actually a larger picture yeah. than that you know like you say the hours when they're not at school a lot happens a lot happens. and teachers they play a big part in our lives as from oh, a young age we all remember teachers from yeah. from primary school and secondary school for good or bad reasons and you spend more time in school than you do at home yeah you do so teachers they do play a big part in these these kids lives and you'd hope for the, the, the better reasons. But like I said, what? it's hard. Sometimes I'm lost for words. Yeah. I'm actually lost for words of what's actually going on in London at the minute. Mm. Every day this is happening. Mm. I mean, it's something dumb like 50 killings or 50 stabbings since the turn of the year. Yeah. That's averaging around 13 stabbings a month. Imagine, I'm only in eight. imagine 30, like, that's more than your football team starting. Like, imagine every man on your team, 11 man on your team, yeah. get stabbed once a month. Yeah. What? That's crazy. It is. When that's you put it in context like that, yeah. You know what I mean? And, that, and that's real. That's 11 man and, and two man on the bench. <laughs> so See, I'm, I'm laughing, but it's not, it's not funny. If you're, if you're number 12 and 13 yeah. on the bench, it's bad. Like, you better hope you're number 17 yeah. on the bench. It's, 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 it's one of those, man, where... But one. some of these kids have got to realise there there is another side to this. You you can get out of that life. You can yeah. have a positive life. Go and get a job, mm. earn good money, real money, mm. stable money, and, and get yourself out of that life. You don't have to stay there. There's there's, there's positivity out there for you. Go yeah. and find it. It's but do they want to? Do they do they want to step away from the the glamorous sort of life? That, they, that they're sort of having now because they, they're making a good chunk of change at, for their age. They don't have no bills, they don't have to pay. So they're just spending it on Gucci belt, Balenciagas, or whatever they want to spend it on. And they're seeing their olders pushing good whips, but that aren't in their name anyway. Yeah, yeah. Could it be the argument is 
or, or the problem is that a lot of these boys and girls, they don't even want to step away from it. Like, this is what we go back, we were talking about incentive. We've got to give them a carrot, an incentive to step away from it. And I, I, saw, I saw a little interview the other day on Facebook and it was like, someone was saying, you can't get these kids off the street because you can't give them what this man can give them. You can't. Yeah, yeah. What you're going to say to them is to, go and, is to go and find the job if they're 17, 18, go and find the job. And all they're getting is 7.20 an hour. When on the road, they're making like five bills a day. So it's like that incentive. Where, how do you speak to someone that makes five bills a day? You know they're doing bad, and they know they're doing bad. But they feel like society's put them in that situation, and they're making more money than than a lot of adults. Yeah, yeah. How do you how do you incentivize a kid like that? Of course, and that, that is going to be tough. Let's be real. That that is tough because you don't earn that kind of money in a, a normal nine to five. No. If, don't. if you're talking five bills a day, yeah. it's just not many jobs where you earn that kind of money. But I'll tell you what though, like, I think our era is, is starting to become more, more types of um, entrepreneurial. They're yeah, like yeah. more entrepreneurial than people that, of our era. So that, that means that in our, in our era, I say our era, it's probably like more than that. that the idea of making a lot of money or making good amounts of money or not working for no one and having endless streams of money in your own creative way of making it is doable. So maybe that's where we got to do it. We got to, we got to sort of get out there and start preaching about entrepreneurial ventures and talk about, yeah, you might not, you might not get five bills a day if you go and work. You're not calling out any any shops' names and that, but like not if you go and work at JD or what, yeah. you might get you might you might not get five bills, but you might you might get five bills if you build your own empire if you yeah, if yeah. you st- build a business idea and you market it correctly. But you might have to listen to someone yeah, yeah. to to get that going as opposed to disrespecting elders or disrespecting teachers or not yeah. seeking help or not wanting help. Yeah, we so, all need help at some point in our lives. Yeah, so... 100%. Maybe that's the way forward, like, to try and get more, like, entrepreneurial mindsets at a younger stage, yeah. at a younger mind. Because, like, I mean, they want us... A lot, a lot, of, a lot of... Like, the society, they want us to, to go through school and a lot of the time get in debt for university, get in debt to get a car and get a nine-to-five job and pay our taxes and then eventually have a family and eventually die. Like, that's the, that's that's the cycle yeah. that is typical and that a lot, like you can argue society probably wants us to do, to keep things safe, to keep, keep it economically stable yeah. and that sort of stuff. But like you said, there's, there's a lot more to it. There's a lot more to life. There's maybe this entrepreneurial mindset might just take, take it, or take things away from the standard nine to five, working for someone else mindset. Give them something to do. If there's something they're for or something they're passionate about, mm. then maybe they don't want to be on the street because they've got something to do. Hold up a minute. I've got my business to focus on here. Mm. I can't be on the street after yeah. hours. I've got to go home and do work or go wherever and do work and focus on that yeah. rather than focusing on other things. To throw a spanner in the works though, like someone on the other side like, of things would say, well, I'm actually like say like an older like he's got he's got his, his group of kids and that. He's he's he could argue and say, well, I'm actually in, I'm instilling life skills. I'm instilling empowerment. I'm I'm telling them to take these take these drugs and that and go and pedal them across the street. Like they're doing it and they're getting the job done. They're doing it effectively. They're doing it efficiently. They they they're doing it on time. I'm teaching them ma- um, money ma- money handling money management. They could argue that they're, that you're learning those things on the road, but the, the thing is, though, you know, it's it's just not legal, though. You know, and what it's I mean? not it's clean. Like, it's not clean, like, and even though they're making money, you like, you can never have a house on your name. You can never have no. a car on your name. Nothing's through the bank, like those those kids there. They're always looking over their shoulder constantly. Yeah. And is that the life they want to live? Yeah.